In 2025, humans will have a unique opportunity – travel to the moon. So far, only 12 people have walked on Earth's natural satellite. But a private company is offering tourists a chance to change that. If you are hog-stinky rich, you can pay $750 million to spend several days exploring the moon and watching Earth from a distance. You can even join unique scientific experiments. Now, humans also want to build their forever homes on the moon. In fact, NASA believes that North Americans may have their own share of the moon by 2040. And you don't even need to be an astronaut to buy a plot of land on the moon. Of course, billionaires are already making plans. Their first idea is to exploit natural resources. The moon is packed with stuff that is rare here on Earth, like helium-3 and many rare Earth minerals or, more precisely, rare moon minerals. But I digress. Hey, if you can get your hands on some of it, you may get even richer. First, helium-3. It's great for clean nuclear energy, but it's super rare on Earth because it escapes into space. The moon, though, has tons of it, enough to power Earth for a thousand years. Rare Earth minerals are not actually rare on Earth, but they're hard to mine because they react with oxygen. On the moon, hey, there's no oxygen. So we could easily get loads of these materials to make better tech, like electronics and batteries. Scientists mm, aren't thrilled about this. For the first time, they have a chance to explore 4.5 billion years of space history. Because the moon's soil has stayed the same for billions of years. Studying its rocks could reveal lots of secrets about the universe's origins. But if billionaires mine the moon and destroy these rocks, all that knowledge could be lost forever. Another problem with exploring the moon is the size of it. The moon is big. But the best spots, the ones with water and sunlight, are limited. Most of the lunar surface is dangerous because of earthquakes or moonquakes, radiation, and meteorites. That means tourists, scientists, and mining companies would be elbowing each other in three small regions. The first region is called the Peaks of Eternal Light because there's always sunlight over there, making it a great energy source for telescopes or human colonies. The second spot is the far side of the moon. Here, radio signals from Earth are not so strong. It's not just peaceful and quiet there. It's also a great place to set up a telescope and study the universe. The third place is called the Pits of Eternal Darkness. It's where all the trolls on social media go on vacation. Nah, <laughs> it's really because no sunlight reaches that area. This place is even better for scientists because they can use special astronomy tools to study the most distant parts of the universe. This is also where you can find about a billion tons of water. If scientists could visit the moon and study it, they would make amazing discoveries. But today, there are no international laws protecting space. No country can own the moon, but this can't stop a private mining company from calling dibs on a particularly good spot. In the past, a bunch of nations signed the Outer Space Treaty, and they agreed that space exploration was supposed to benefit all humankind. But exploring it is not cheap in the first place. Taking a single gallon of water from the moon to the Earth is extraordinarily expensive, and I bet not everyone can afford that. Human activity on the moon is also extremely dangerous, because it might change its atmosphere. Now, to understand it better, let's look at the surface of the moon. This floating rock has many craters that have been forming for billions of years. When a meteorite crashes into the moon, fine dust called regolith, with particles so tiny they can cut like glass, rises into the air. This process once created the atmosphere of the moon. And this atmosphere is quite different from the atmosphere of Earth. A big rocket landing on the moon can launch this fine dust into the lunar sky. And the difference here is that the space objects crashing into the lunar surface are actually gentler. A rocket landing is so intense, it can increase the number of atoms in the sky 100,000 times. If the number of atoms in the atmosphere grows, the air turns into a dusty plasma. This means that you'll be breathing in air as toxic as the one that poisoned miners in the olden days. Such an atmosphere could end space tourism too, because it makes electronics malfunction and machinery shut down. 
Well, truth be told, our own presence on the moon is already dangerous. When scientists discovered water on the surface of the moon, they were super excited to study it. This was their chance to understand where this water came from, and even figure out how water appeared on Earth. But when our spacecraft land on the moon, outgassing occurs. This means that the water on the surface evaporates. This evaporated water can contaminate the water on the moon, ruining all scientific data. Because when astronauts take a sample of the lunar water to study it, they will get the water from Earth they have brought along. Uh, bummer, really. And it's not just the water we contaminate, it's everything. A spaceship can carry any living thing from Earth to the Moon. It can also bring extraterrestrial life forms back to Earth. This type of contamination is extremely dangerous, because it can put human lives at risk. Something similar happened when Europeans were exploring unfamiliar lands they came upon in the Americas. They accidentally introduced new microbes to the natives they met. And since the immune systems of the native population were not used to those new bacteria and viruses, they got sick and worse. At the same time, Europeans also became ill with diseases their bodies didn't know about yet. And even though moon tourism is not happening yet, humans are already littering the lunar highlands like their own backyard. In 2024, an artist named Jeff Koons sent a sculpture to the moon. The sculpture is a transparent box filled with spheres, and it got to the moon thanks to a ride on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. In each sphere, Coons engraved the name of a human he considered super important to humankind, like Aristotle, David Bowie, and Leonardo da Vinci. Thankfully, you don't have to go all the way to the moon to see this sculpture. You can purchase an NFT of each sphere. Or not. Back in 1971, the crew members of Apollo 15 also left a couple of things on the moon. A figure created by a Belgian artist and a commemorative plaque to honor other astronauts who couldn't be there. And it's not just art that humans dumped on the moon. If you take a walk, you might just stumble upon 413,000 pounds of materials left behind, including a gold olive branch, a falcon feather, a silver astronaut pin, a Bible, some golf balls, a hammer, and even leftover urine collection kits. Most of this stuff was left behind by the astronauts that explored space between the 60s and 70s. So you can find moon rangers, lunar probes, and orbiters that are decades old already. Now to be fair, bringing back unnecessary equipment costs a ton of money. And back in the 60s, their priority was the safety of the astronauts. The sad truth is that the moon is already turning into an extraterrestrial landfill, and we don't even live there yet. But now we want to settle there, so NASA is trying to get rid of all this trash. The good news? Hey, you can be part of this process. The space agency launched a competition called the Luna Recycle Challenge. And if you want to join it, you must find ways to reduce the amount of litter produced and recycle it into materials that can be used for space exploration. To win, you need to develop a way to completely recycle the trash that is on the surface of the moon. You will help science and win $3 million. And if you get this sum, well, you might finally afford a ticket into space. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.